Good morning and welcome. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insight. We continue with our series, Divine Experience. Most religions and philosophies around the world are built on precepts of ethical considerations. And to some people, doing good is akin to being religious. No, I have had people tell me, you know, I do good. I give to the poor. I give to charity. So I'm good. I'll go to heaven. So you find that there are people who do not want to fully embrace Christianity, but they live up to the good deeds that Christianity demands. And there are people in the Bible, and even today, that we know to be noble. I'm sure you can count a few in your circles and maybe you consider yourself noble too. So people of unquestionable morality and religious zeal. But the question is, and that is a question I want us to ponder today, is doing good. Let me phrase it this way. Okay, I'm going to take a step back and phrase the question. The question is, does doing good earn us salvation? Is it really enough? So, think about that. We'll answer it. Not loudly. You can maybe give, give me a voice mail record right there or even in the comment section. Let's have this discussion. Let me know. Does doing good earn us salvation? Is it really enough? So the Apostle Luke narrates in the book of Acts chapter 10, we're going to read verse 1 to 8, that there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. He was a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and when he, he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon Atana, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Job. Wow. So today, this is a, a, taking another turn in our Divine Experience series. So Luke paints so well the character of this man, Cornelius, a man who was a centurion, or rather a captain over a hundred soldiers. This was a devout man, a man who feared God, a generous man, a man who impacted even his family with his devotion. He was a Gentile who had fully embraced Judaism and lived up to it. He was an officer in the Roman Empire, and that empire by then was oppressing Israel at that time. And this was a man who had realized the bankruptcy of pagan religion and sought to worship God and lead a moral life. So Luke paints a man who had a light in him, a man who was close enough to the kingdom, but just outside the kingdom nonetheless. We see a man who had a relationship with God, a man who was sympathetic and supportive to the Jewish faith, yet he was not part of the mainstream Jewish faith. But the Bible says that about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, you see, 
Yeah, like we have seen in the previous episode, God is taking the initiative to reach out, to open the door to an individual who might have been considered an unlikely candidate for that. You know, we with that background you think no they are not the kind of people who receive vision who receive divine experiences who receive divine uh visitations no but we find that god takes this initiative and reaches out he opens this door he had sought god in his own ways but his turn this this is the turn for god to seek him to to connect with him and the bible says that what he saw he saw clearly cornelius knew it couldn't have been a dream in fact it was so vivid that in acts 10 that he says that a man stood beside me in bright clothing you know this is something we have said time and again in previous episode and i'm sure right now you are almost saying it with me that when time is due for you to have a divine experience the lord makes it so clear that the moment it happens you know without a doubt that you are experiencing something beyond this world it is something divine the bible tells us that the angel of the lord said to him your prayers your arms have come up for a memorial before god you know if you read Uh, Leviticus 2:2 you hear about the memorial portion that was burnt on the altar before the Lord and about which the Bible says an aroma pleasing to the Lord went up to God and so like the aroma of that sacrifice the prayers and the good deeds of Cornelius had reached the Lord the Lord had been pleased with him and it was time for God to reveal his salvation to him and in preparation for this the angel told Cornelius to send men to Joppa for Simon Peter and he obeyed and today i want us to focus on the condition in which Cornelius was in when he had this experience you see Cornelius had lived up to the light he had he had lived nobly He had influenced the people close to him with his good deeds. Yet as close as he was to walking with Christ, as good as his deeds were, he still was lacking in something. Close as he was to the kingdom of God, he still remained at the outskirts. He was a lost noble man. But God was about to change all this. He was about to give Cornelius more light than he had in him. You see, sometimes we live under the illusion that our good deeds are good enough by themselves. That we are as good as saved because our morals are irreproachable. But I want to I want to remind us today that we need more light than we have to be saved. That like Jesus said, you must be born again. it is absolutely necessary for us to experience a rebirth i don't know if you realize that unlike everyone we have covered so far in this divine experience there was seemingly nothing wrong with cornelius life as it was he was under no distress he was right with god he was an exemplary individual in the society his morals were unquestionable Yet the Lord came to him. He extended an invitation to him like he extends to us, an invitation to something better, an invitation to the inner circle. Cornelius was a gentile who worshiped the God of Israel. He followed the Jewish moral teachings, he attended and contributed to the synagogue, he observed the Sabbath and practiced the Jewish piety, and yet the Lord sends an angel to him and tells him yes i have heard your prayers yes i have seen your deeds but here is something more that i need from you send for peter and he will tell you what you must do you see like cornelius some of us are still held back by our old beliefs of doing good deeds like is is all that count are going to church 
giving alms, helping the poor is as good as attaining salvation. But I pray that we may accept the invitation that the Lord is extending to us today. The invitation to a greater life. The invitation to real salvation through Jesus Christ. I pray that our eyes may be open. That our vision may be clearer. May we continue to have these divine experiences. Not only when things are going well. But also when we think that everything is well. Least we sit back when we should be seeking something more. May we continue to seek the Lord by all means available to us, even as we wait for those special experiences. And like Cornelius said of his people to get Peter at the command of the Lord, may we not hesitate when the Lord seeks us. Amen and amen. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insights, and this is Divine Experience Day 11. Shalom. Thank you for your continued support and encouragement to the making of the daily insights. Reaching an average of 60 people a day with over 10,000 total plays. I invite you to partner with us by supporting this podcast through monthly or one-time donation. Your contribution will be used to sustain the episode subscription and hosting platform. My goal is to inspire and share insightful messages in our generation, empowering one person at a time each day to continue serving the purposes of God in our generation. Your support is highly appreciated. Click that support button now and give your support. You can support with $1, $5, or as much as you are able to give. Blessings.